part, now that you have the base done, it's time to move on to the next part, which is the jaw. This looks fairly complex. We have this shape down here, um, and then we have this weird rounded part, and then a circle cutting through it. We're going to just break it down step by step so that we can make it pretty easily. One of the important things about Inventor is you can only make things a certain depth once. So I can't make this whole shape all using one tool. I have to kind of cut it into pieces and do one at a time. To do that, we're going to make this whole front shape ignoring this circle. And we're going to pretend that this circular part that's cut out doesn't exist. We're essentially going to extend it forward so that's one flat shape in the front. And then we're going to cut away afterwards to make the actual shape that we want. So in essence, we'll be drawing it from the back because that's one flat surface. Uh, so that's another way of kind of picturing it. So I have a part loaded in Inventor, and we're going to start our sketch. And again, we're going to go to our front plane. And I'm just going to draw this shape out, again, ignoring this circular part up here. So again, we always start at our origin. We never start anywhere else. I'm going to draw these little cutouts there for what's called the keys, which we'll learn about later. And we notice that my origin is down here, so this extends past my origin. So we're going to go past it, come back down. And there's our initial part. So we can go ahead and start dimensioning this. Again, I'm going to work horizontally first. So I'm going to just go and make any horizontal dimensions I see, like this 3.5 versus 1.125, 1.25. And it's starting to make things a little weird. That's OK. We'll fix that when we get to it. And apparently it doesn't like that dimension, which makes sense because if I do the math, it will Inventor will learn what that line is. So it looks really weird again, but once we put in our vertical dimensions, things will start lining up. So we can put in this 1.75. Remember, I'm treating the whole height of this as a part, so I'm going to put in this 2 inches then. And then I can also tell where these little um, cutouts start as well. And now things are starting to look a lot better, except this key is a little small. So let's add those dimensions then. Oops. Now I'm putting in the dimension of 0.1875 but it's only showing 0.188. That's because Inventor rounds to a third decimal, but it is actually 0.1875. Now, something I've noticed as I've seen some of you make your parts is you don't make sure everything has a dimension. So like you'll have a green line and you'll go ahead and use it. Problem with that is if you accidentally like drag something, now your mass is going to be off. So you need to always make sure everything is fully constrained. It says fully constrained down here before you can move on to the next part. So now that I have this part done, or this sketch done, I'm going to extrude it out to be the width of it, which we see down here is 1.75. So I'm going to just click E on my keyboard. And type in 1.75. And we have our initial part. Now we're going to draw this circle back here, and this little line here, and we're going to cut away this circular part over here. So I'm going to create a sketch on my side, and I'm going to just draw a random circle, doesn't matter where, and then dimension it later. So we see the radius of the circle is 1.5 inches. So it's measuring diameter right now, so I need to do 1.5 times 2, or 3. 
And then we see the circle is 1.375 inches from the very top. So I'm going to click on the center of my circle, click on the top. Come on. There we go. And type in 1.375. Now, there's this line here that intersects the circle uh, one inch up from the top or from the uh, bottom of this area. So that would be one inch up from here. We have a line. So one in because this is two inches, one inch will be our center point. So I can just find the center and draw my line there. And there we go. This area here is what we're then going to cut out. So I'm going to go ahead and select Extrude. And it won't let me grab it yet because it doesn't realize that there's a line over here. So to fix that, I'm going to just draw a quick line from where the circle intersects along the top and then down to that one inch line that we just did. Now I can select that part and I want to cut it away and I want to cut everything away. So there's that cut out. Now let's do this front part. I have a circle that has a radius of 0.75 centered that goes back and then I have a hole after that. So I'm going to create a sketch on the front and draw a circle on the center point so I want to make sure I'm on the center and make it again it's a radius of 0.75 so I need to do 0.75 times 2 or 1.5. Now I can just extrude this, and I want to go to the surface, so I'm going to change my distance to 2 and select this part. And right now it's cutting it away, so I just want to click here on Join to add the material instead of cut it. And there we are so far. Lastly, we have a circle cutting in. So I'm going to use the Hole tool to do that because it, it is a hole, it just doesn't go all the way through, so it's called a blind hole. And I can click anywhere and then click on the circle surrounding it to center that. We see the diameter for this is 0.75, and then there's this little weird arrow with a line going down. That's depth for 0.5. So I'm going to change my termination to be distance, put my depth of 0.5, my diameter of 0.75, click OK, and there we go. Lastly, our material is cast iron. So I'm going to go to iron cast and check our mass. We have a mass of 3.623 pounds, so let's go ahead and save this. And there we go. That's that part there.